Today, I'm sharing six quick SEO tips that you can implement on your website to improve your SEO. After analyzing hundreds of websites, I've noticed that there are a few common SEO mistakes that come up again and again, but are also relatively quick fixes. If you're an experienced blogger, hopefully you already have most of these things in place. But I also know that sometimes it's really easy to get tunnel vision on your own site and sometimes forget a little bit of the basics. So let's go through six of these quick tasks and hopefully at least one, if not all of them, will apply to you and give you a nice little website improvement this week. Tip number one is to optimize your homepage's title tag for a strong first impression. If you've ever Googled your business and felt like the title displayed in the search results for your website doesn't really do justice to what you offer, this tip is for you. You are not alone in this, by the way. Many businesses are not optimizing their homepage's title tag. And this is a small yet significant element that can enhance your visibility and especially your click-through rates on search engines. So first up, what is a title tag? A title tag is the clickable title displayed in the search results for any page or post on your website. And this is really your first opportunity to attract potential visitors and convey what your website is all about. And why is the title tag important? There's a chance that someone who's Googling your brand name is hearing about you for the first time. Perhaps a friend told them to look you up or they heard about you on a podcast and they're typing your name into Google to check out your site. A well-optimized title tag can provide them with a very clear idea of what to expect from your website and encourage them to click through. So how do we optimize our title tag? Well, first, I want you to check out what you have already. So Google your business name from a computer browser or your phone and find your website in the results. Analyze what your current title tag is for your homepage. If you're only seeing like your brand name and then the word home or something like that, then you definitely have a lot of room for optimization here. So I want you to then look for some inspiration for good title tags, especially in your niche or industry. Check out how successful brands in your niche have optimized their title tags for their homepage. For example, the low FODMAP food blog, A Little Bit Yummy, says, if you Google their brand name, their homepage says, A Little Bit Yummy, colon, low FODMAP diet recipes and meal plans. So it's very clear just by looking at that one sentence what their website is about and what you can expect to find if you clicked through. Similarly, business coach Rick Mulready, his title tag says Rick Mulready colon business coach and online ads expert, because in addition to offering coaching for online businesses, he is formerly a Facebook ads expert and spent his time teaching that. So he's both a business coach and an online ads expert. Amy Porterfield, who is also an online business coach, expert, trainer, I guess you should say. She offers an online course about how to build online courses. And her title tag for her website says Amy Porterfield, colon, online marketing expert and New York Times bestselling author. And this is probably a newer change to her title tag because she recently came out with a book. So once you have scoped out your competition and sort of brainstormed some ideas for what your title tag could be, then we just have to implement the change. So to do this, you just wanna open up your homepage on your website in the editor in WordPress, scroll down to the bottom to where your SEO plugin settings are. If you use an SEO plugin like Yoast, they allow you to adjust the title tag right there in the settings for that page. So I want you to edit the SEO title to include not just your brand name and then like home or something like that, but a concise description of what you offer. Use appropriate punctuation to separate your brand name from that little description, so almost like a tagline. Uh, choose whatever is visually appealing to you. It doesn't matter what uh, type of separator you use for SEO. And if you're not sure, you can always test out different titles to find the one that best resonates with your target audience. But please note that the changes that you make in your title tag in the plugin area for that page are not going to instantaneously be reflected in the search results. So you make the change, you Google it, you Google your website, and you're like, oh, 
it still shows my old title tag. That's because it takes Google's crawlers time to go through and notice that you've made a change. So recrawl the page and then update what they're showing in the search results. So if you do nothing, it will probably update itself within a week or two. If you want to speed things up, feel free to go into Google Search Console and submit your homepage URL for indexing. And last but not least, although we can strongly suggest what we want Google to show as our title tag, Google has the final say. So there's no guarantee that they're going to show whatever you type in. If they think that your title tag is actually a bit misleading for what you're actually displaying on the page, or they think they have something better to better satisfy the user, then they may show whatever they want as your title tag. But a well-optimized title increases the chances of your preferred title being chosen. So your action steps today, take five minutes this week to optimize your homepage's title tag and make a strong first impression on potential visitors. Tip number two, boost your site's trustworthiness with an accessible about page. So in the digital world, trust is a currency, and especially so in today's age with all the explosion of AI content. So one simple yet effective way to build trust with your audience and Google is by making your about page very clearly and easily accessible on your website. What is your about page? Well, it's simply a page on your website, usually titled about or about us or about me or something like that. It's a section on your website where you introduce yourself and your business to your visitors. It's a space to showcase your expertise, the mission of your business, the people behind it, and help build trust and establish credibility. And why is an about page important? Well, according to Google's Quality Rater guidelines, a website that clearly indicates who is behind it is deemed more trustworthy, especially for topics that require a lot of trust, like nutrition. And this all ties into this concept of EEAT, which is a Google concept that they put out there to help explain how they judge the trustworthiness of content. EEAT stands for experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. And basically, they want to see that you have experience, that you have expertise, that you have authority in the topic that you're writing about. And all of those factors together are kind of lumped up to create this trust concept. So you want to do everything within your personal power to show Google that you are a trustworthy source. And one component of that is having a clearly accessible about page on your website. Website. So how to do this? Number one, I want you to go to your website and double check in your main navigation at the top of your website. Do you have your about page linked there in your main menu? We want to ensure that the about us link is present in the main navigation of your website so that visitors can easily learn more about you no matter where they are on your site. The main menu is always going to show at the top of the page no matter where someone is on your site so they can quickly and easily figure out who you are if they want to learn more about you and why they can trust you. And then not only do we want to have the link to the about page, but we also want to make sure that our about page is good, right? So we want to take some time to tweak the content on that page. We want to develop a high quality about page that effectively showcases your EEAT. So consider sharing your journey, your qualifications, and what visitors can expect from your website. So action steps for this. Number one, visit your website to confirm if the About Us link is in the main navigation. If not, add it. Number two, create. If you don't have an About page or the content on it is a little weak, prioritize creating an About page or updating your About page this week. And if you want detailed guidance on designing an About page that really resonates with your audience and checks off all the things that Google is looking for to establish trust, I have a whole section on this inside my SEO Made Simple course. So if you want to learn more about my course and what you can learn there, just head to the website seofreebie.com to watch my free training and get the link to join. I'll put the link in the description below this video as well. Tip number three, enhance trust with comprehensive contact information. So again, tuning back into this concept of EEAT. This is a crucial metric used by Google to assess the credibility of websites, especially if you're talking about anything that can impact someone's money or their life. And nutrition falls into that category. So again, in addition to seeing an about page to understand clearly who is behind the content, 
They also deem it very important to have a clearly accessible contact page as well with clear contact information for someone behind the website. This is an important part, again, of building trust. Clear contact information showcases transparency, and it definitely makes your site appear more trustworthy. And if you read Google's Quality Rater Guidelines, which is a document that Google uses to train humans to analyze the quality of their search results, and they take that feedback and incorporate it into their algorithms to try to show higher quality results in the search results for Google. So they have these Quality Rater Guidelines, and if you read through them, they clearly say that having clear contact information is a component of this trust factor. And in addition, obviously having contact information clearly accessible is great for the user experience as well. If someone wants to contact you, they shouldn't have to dig deep into like your privacy policy or your terms of service. There should be a clear place to get in touch right there in the main navigation. So how do we set up comprehensive contact information that satisfies what Google and probably your users are looking for? Well, number one, we wanna provide diverse contact options. So ideally, you wanna offer various ways for visitors to contact you, even going so far as creating multiple email addresses for people to contact you. So like sales at yourwebsite.com, customer service at yourwebsite.com, giving the impression that there's like different sections of your business where people can contact you for different needs. And you don't actually have to have different people in charge of these things. You can create something called aliases in Gmail. So a lot of people use Google Workspace for their business email, and you can just create simple aliases for your single email address. So let's say your actual email address is your name at yourbusiness.com, let's pretend. You can create email aliases, which would be like support at yourbusiness.com, sales at yourbusiness.com, uh, refunds at yourbusiness.com, whatever, uh, and have them all forward to your individual email inbox. So you can get all the messages, and then when you reply, you can select which email you're replying from as well. So it will look like they're talking to you through XYZ email, like support at blah, blah, blah.com, but you can manage it all through your personal inbox at your business. And if you don't wanna do this yourself, you can set up something similar for another person on your team as well. So the more contact information you can provide, the better. So at least one email address, if not more, phone number and physical address is the ultimate combination. And if you're listening to this right now and you're like, oh, what? I don't have a physical address. I'm a blogger. Well, it's actually very simple to get a business address, and I highly recommend having one if you're treating your website like a business. Businesses have business addresses, inboxes, contact information, and it is important to follow those best practices and also protect yourself and your identity uh, online as well. You don't want to be putting your home address for all of your business documentation. So if you don't have a business address, you can easily get one set up at postscanmail.com. I'll put a link to that below the video. That's where you can get a virtual business address and a physical mailing address for people to mail you things uh, just 100% online. You pay a monthly fee, uh, people will send mail to that address, they'll send you an email when they get a package or a letter for you. You can say, oh, scan it for me. They'll scan it and you can see it inside your virtual inbox and if it's something Important, you can say, oh, please forward this to XYZ mailing address, and they'll forward it to your personal home address, for example, if it's a physical letter that you need. So highly recommend that. And if you also would like to have a phone number, check out Google Voice. You can set up a virtual business phone number through that platform, and it can all run through just your laptop or your phone, where you can use your phone to make business calls, but it will show your business number, etc. So those are the services that I use and recommend for setting up business contact information. So your action steps here. First, gather all the information you need. Compile the email addresses, phone number or phone numbers if you have different departments, and the mailing address that you wanna list on your website. Then create or update your Contact Us page. So if you don't have a Contact Us page yet, create one and put this information on it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you wanna make sure these three components are there if possible. 
if you have a contact us page, but you're looking at it and all you have is just like, uh, here, here's a form, <laughs> type your message and send it to me. That's like the worst possible contact page you can have. Uh, I will say from direct experience that sometimes like you, maybe even a brand is like wanting to reach out to you and work with you. But if they cannot get an actual email address to email you at and all they see is this contact form to submit, they might just skip over you entirely and not even reach out. Because if you're submitting information into one of those forms, the person sending you that message cannot track it. So it's really not ideal for people who are doing outreach. So I don't even like those forms. I just recommend putting a direct email address that they can email you at, phone number and mailing address. So update your contact us page accordingly to establish trust. And you should be able to do all of this, including the, the virtual mailbox and the phone number uh, and the Google Workspace email for under 50 bucks a month. So since we're running a business here, we will have expenses. These are tax deductible, that's great. But in the grand scheme of your business, spending $50 a month to have legitimate contact information uh, should be very negligible in the long run. And the payoff is immense in establishing trust. Tip number four, Establish trust with detailed blog post metadata. So what is blog post metadata? Well, this is the information that you're gonna see displayed on a blog post underneath the title. So things like who wrote the post, the date it was published, when it was last updated, et cetera, et cetera. This is crucial information to have included on your blog post. If you don't have this, it very well could hurt you moving forward, especially in this day and age of, in, of trying to show trustworthy content created by humans, not just AI spun up content. Google is putting increased emphasis on who wrote the content and the authority that that person has in the niche. So if it's unclear who wrote the content, that's not good. And I have seen a lot of examples recently of people publishing blog posts and they don't show who wrote it, when it was published, or any of that. And that is going to hurt you. And in addition to not being good for SEO, it's also not great for the user experience if you're missing this information in your metadata. If people don't know the recency of your content and when it was updated, or the reliability of your content based on who wrote it, that's not great for the user experience as well. And user experience is so, so, so important online and when you're trying to create trustworthy content that ranks in Google. So how do we optimize our blog post metadata? Well, number one, make sure you're showing the author details for each blog post. Ensure that your full name or whoever wrote it, the full name of the author is shown, including any relevant credentials displayed in their name. Uh, do not just show like your username in the metadata. That's another mistake that I see happen sometimes. Uh, sometimes your theme settings by default will show your username in the metadata instead of your name. This is very simple to fix in the back end of Word WordPress, but sometimes it's overlooked. So if you are bringing up a blog post on your website and you, it says currently by Nutrition Girl 247 or something, because that's your username, that is bad. What you want it to say is by your first name, last name, comma, all of your credentials, right? That will help establish trust and not only establish trust, but help Google understand who wrote the content by showing your name. And then they sort of have this like database, this knowledge bank, it's called the knowledge graph, of trying to understand who people are on the internet. And if you're not showing your full name and credentials, it's gonna make it that much harder for Google to put the pieces together that this person wrote this post, this person also wrote this post and this post and was mentioned on this website and wrote a guest post on this other authoritative website, et cetera. So we wanna spoon feed Google the information they need to see us as a trustworthy source at every possible turn. <laughs> so number one, make sure that your author details are present in the, the metadata area underneath your blog post title. Number two, we also wanna show the published date or ideally the last updated date or both. So Google wants to see that your content is fresh and that it's up to date and that it's not something you published five years ago and never came back to to update. Especially again, if you're publishing any sort of content that could affect someone's health, livelihood, finances, et cetera. So we want to ideally adjust the settings in our theme to show the last updated date in the byline there. So you could say published on blank date, last updated on blank date, or just last updated on blank date. And then you wanna make, build it into your processes to maybe once a year come in and freshen up content that is starting to get stale. 
So if you're not showing the date at all, or you're not showing the last updated date, those are things that you can work on to improve trust with Google and your users as well. And then the third thing you can do is use an author box at the end of your post. So you can use plugins like Malangui Authorship, could be totally like mangling the pronunciation of that, but I'll put a link below this video to the plugin that I use to create an author box. But basically what this will do is you can set it all up in the back end, and then at the bottom of your blog post, it will show a nice looking author box with your picture, a link to your LinkedIn profile, your bio, um, et cetera, et cetera, to highlight that you are a real person with expertise and authority on this topic. So action steps here today. First, check what your byline underneath your blog post currently looks like. So if it doesn't show the author or it doesn't show the date, those are things you definitely want to fix. If you need to update the display name for your user, so if it's currently showing your username instead of your name, you can do that in the WordPress settings by going to users, all users, go into your profile, and then select the display name to be whatever you want it to show. Additionally, we would like that name to link to either the about page for your website, if you're a single person writing on the site, or to an author page with more information about that specific author. So that makes sense when you have multiple contributing authors on a website, each person should have their own standalone author page and their name in the byline should link to that about page so people can learn more about you if they desire. And you should be able to set up all of this stuff within the settings for your theme. And in your theme settings, you should also be able to find the option to show the date or the last published date. If these things are not available in the theme that you're using, you should also be able to custom code it into your theme files if needed. And last but not least, if you don't have an author box showing underneath your posts and you're looking for an easy way to add that functionality, check out the Malangui Authorship plugin. This will enhance the author section with additional details and give you a trust boost. Tip number five, enhance the user experience on your posts with a table of contents. So what is a table of contents in a blog post? Well, it's basically like a little box that can show up at the top of your post with a clickable outline uh, showing all the different sections of your post. And that way someone can see like, oh, these are the different things they're gonna cover in this post. Oh, I don't care about this stuff. I wanna go just directly to this section. They click on that line in the table of contents and it will take them directly to that section of your blog post. And this is great for the user experience, but it also can give you some nice little bonuses inside the Google search results as well by creating jump links to direct subsections of your blog posts right in the Google search results. And you can see that having these jump links in the search results can give you an opportunity to stand out against your competition there in the search results if other people are not using this feature. And it's actually pretty simple to set up. So how do we do this? Well, first you'll need to install a plugin on your website to give you this functionality, unless your theme perhaps already comes with it. If you need a plugin to do this, the one that I'm currently using and enjoying is called Lucky WP Table of Contents. So I will, again, put a link to that <laughs> below this video in the description. And it's a very simple way to add table of contents to your blog post then you need to identify when it's appropriate to use a table of contents. If you have a very short post uh, without a lot of subsections, you probably don't need it. It would probably be overkill and people will just scroll right past it. But if you're publishing a really extensive how-to or kind of like cornerstone piece of content that's thousands of words long, it can be very, very helpful to help people get to the sections that they're interested in by including a table of contents like this at the top of your post. So if you've identified that it would be helpful to the user, then you can just insert the table of contents into that specific post. And what I like about the Lucky WP table of contents plugin is that you can just insert it as a block directly in the WordPress editor. So that means you can insert it manually at any point in the blog post where it makes the most sense for that piece of content. And then of course, as a part of this, you'll wanna make sure that you're structuring your headings in a very concise and well-organized way 
to make this feature actually useful. So if you don't really understand how to structure a blog post and you're just typing like full sentences as subheadings and they're all jumbled out of order, jumping between H2s, H3s, and H4s just because you thought the font size was, was nice <laughs> or you wanted to bold something and so you made it a heading, like no, that is worse practice. <laughs> so if you don't know how to structure your post appropriately with headings, this is gonna make your post look like a jumbled mess inside the table of contents. So just be aware that you need to make sure that you're using these headings almost like an outline of your post and applying the right heading size to create a logical structure to your post, which again is great for the user and amazing for SEO and Google understanding your content. And if you don't know how to do all of this, again, I teach this inside my SEO Made Simple course and you can learn more about it and get the link to sign up at seofreebie.com. So action steps here, figure out whether it makes sense for your content to include a table of contents. If so, install that Lucky WP table of contents plugin and start using it. And finally, tip number six, claim your Google knowledge panel for greater control over what people are seeing about you and your brand in the search results. So what is a Google knowledge panel? Well, a Google knowledge panel is a box that appears in the Google search results, usually on the right hand side for desktop viewers or at the top of the search results for people on mobile, showcasing important information about a well-known person or an entity like a brand um, that Google knows about in its knowledge graph. It can include details like brief bio, website links, social media profiles, and other relevant data, again, sourced from Google's knowledge graph, which is like their repository of information about everything in the world. So if you don't have a knowledge panel yet, this is probably a sign that you're not a big enough brand to be on Google's radar. Not a big deal, but something to aspire to. So work on building your brand awareness, uh, getting featured on other outlets, other websites, getting people to mention you in forums on the internet, um, become a recommended trusted source in your niche, publish a book, that's a really, really big one for getting a knowledge panel, get featured on a TV show, in the news, in the media in general. All of these things can help increase the likelihood that you will earn a Google knowledge panel in the search results. So once you have the Google Knowledge Panel, it's important to claim it if you haven't done so yet. So if you have a Google Knowledge Panel, so you Google your name and you see this panel show up in the search results, you should also see a little button that says, claim this Knowledge Panel. If this Knowledge Panel is about you, you can click that button, prove your identity to Google, and then they will approve you for claiming this. And then that allows you to suggest edits to them if you see something that's incorrect in your knowledge panel. So for example, maybe there's more than one person out there in the world with your name, and maybe they've mixed you up in some regard in your knowledge panel with this other person. If you claim the knowledge panel, then you can make suggested edits to clear up any mistakes like that. So your action steps here. I want you to check on a somewhat regular basis to see if you've earned a knowledge panel. So maybe every six months or so, do a quick Google of your name uh, if you've been working on building your online presence in your brand and see if you've gained one. If you have, then I want you to click the claim this knowledge panel button at the bottom of the panel and initiate the claiming process. And as I mentioned, there is a verification process that you're gonna have to go through to confirm your identity with Google then you can go through and verify that the information that you're seeing is up to date and accurate. And again, if you don't have a knowledge panel yet, then your action steps here are working on building your presence to increase the chances that you're gonna get one. So final thoughts here today. I hope you enjoyed these six quick SEO tips that should each take 20 minutes or less to implement. I want you to figure out which of these tips you're not already doing on your website and then go take action this week to see some improvements on your website and your search engine optimization. And as always, if you'd like more guidance and support along your blogging journey, I am here for you. Check out my free training at seofreebie.com. There's a free training there. It's about an hour long where I walk you through my entire four-step framework for growing your audience with SEO. And underneath that video, you will see a link and a special offer to sign up for my course and get a really awesome uh, limited time discount for the first time you watch the training. So highly recommend. Again, I'll link to it below this video. And otherwise, hope you have a great week and I appreciate any likes on this video or subscriptions to my channel if you'd like more of this type of content in your feed every week.